what you are looking at is an ancient statue carving that was discovered in an Iran museum of Inanna slash Ishtar. This specific artifact is thousands of years old. It could literally be 10,000 years old. Now, what do you see in this image that stands out as an anomaly? First of all, the goggles that I'm looking at remind me of the drawing of the art H.R. Giger did called The Birth Machine. And, you know, it literally looks like some type of... Here, here look at this. Look at these goggles from H.R. Giger. This is one of his most famous works. H.R. Giger is, in my opinion, the best surrealist artist of all time. I mean, this guy was way above and beyond just about anybody in the work that he did. He was certainly in the apex. Now, that's my opinion. When you really look at this image, and then you go back to this one, look at the comparison there. Now, one thing interesting about Giger is he is the creative force behind Alien, you know, Prometheus, Aliens, various films in Hollywood, and musicians gave a lot of accolades to Giger just because he is so far, was so far ahead of his time with the work that he did. He would combine sacred geometry with surrealism slash transhumanism slash aliens and he'd get in, he'd def, he was definitely a erotic type artist in a very strange sense. And I always felt that Giger was literally tapping into another side, into a different dimension, and a lot of connections to the Anunnaki, the engineers, the demigods, the ancient astronauts that are talked about in scriptures but have been changed to be called fallen angels instead. And, I mean, just read Mario Bellino's work. This guy was a translator for the Vatican for years, and he took Hebrew scribes and translated them to very similar stories that you read from Zachariah Sitchin. And if you want to add some more scholars to this, read the translations of the Sumerian scribes on the Oxford University website. I'll leave a link as well. People that probably never even met Zachariah Sitchin that have a very solid education in Sumerian texts and translations, and not just one person. We're talking over 10 people involved in this project. I've read through many of these Sumerian scriptures that are running neck and neck with what Zachariah Sitchin and others have said. And I've also talked to Jordan Maxwell, which funded... Zachariah Sitchin and many of his endeavors. And I talked to, to Jordan off the air about certain things that also connect dots for me on, on the journey that I've been on here with these engineers of our current status and physical form. Not the creators of life, but the engineers of our current status here. Enki, Enlil, Ishtar, Gilgamesh, Anu, the Anunnaki, are real. Now, what are they? Are they just a tribe from good old planet Earth that were advanced and stronger and bigger than other tribes? And they manipulated people into thinking they were gods or angels or aliens? Or were they really... Are they really just a very intelligent race from another planet that thought they could manipulate the current form here to take care of their bidding? I've read so many texts that parallel the texts in the Bible with just different 
meanings and different names and different titles and labels which have the same underlying theme but have a completely different overall essence of what the story is telling you. Now this image right here is very powerful in my opinion because this doesn't look like anything close to a terrestrial organic form that you would see back then. But heck, let's look at all the stuff that we saw with animal slash human entities with wings and lion heads and who knows how much genetic manipulation was going on before this flood that are talked about in Sumerian texts that predate the Holy Bible Genesis, which is most likely where the Holy Bible Genesis came from. And then I want to talk about Giger again here for a second because if you got you guys probably didn't see that video that I did where I was just goofing around and doing a spoof with my Ozzy Stern deal and I was I busted out the Ouija board and I, I said I wanted to make contact with Giger and the Ouija board didn't move but when I asked what it was like where he was at in the current time and I said where I said, what's a drawing or a painting that you've done or art that you've done in the past that would correlate with where you're at now? And Prometheus came to mind. And then I watched the film Prometheus a few days later and connected the dots with, if you watch Prometheus, the film, the Anunnaki are all over that film. I mean, that's the basis of that film, the Anunnaki. They call them the engineers. And they talk at the very beginning of the film about all these different texts and scribes from around the world in different time periods but ancient, going back almost 30,000 years in some cave in Germany or France, connecting to specific stars that were lined up in, this, uh, in the universe that they were able to track and travel to. And also in this film, there is a, at the beginning, if you remember, there's that rod-shaped UFO in the sky waiting for one of those engineers to drink that gray goo. It's like that whoever they were in that rod-shaped UFO, it's like they gave that gray goo to the engineer to drink to see what would happen. So the engineers of the engineers. Well, some great connections there. So where am I going with this? Here's the dots that I'm connecting. Did I communicate with Giger? Did Giger communicate with me and reconfirm the hidden hand of the Anunnaki, the orchestration of the engineers behind the scenes, predating going back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And in religions, they call them fallen angels. Now let's also look at this image right here. This is an image of an ancient statue of Inanna slash Ishtar. Looks like a spacesuit. And then you can see this ancient Sumerian image carving of what looks like a stargate. Now let's let's go deeper on this. Let's get into Black Hole Sun for a second because I've been covering some of the musical aspects and strange deaths of musicians that link to certain times and then there's events that unfold after that that seem to be in connection with not only metaphysical aspects but also financial gain black hole sun so what a black hole sun is talking about the brown dwarf star that many people feel exists in our solar system the black hole sun in my opinion is saturn the black hole sun as a matrix, as an imprisonment, as an uh, encapsulation of organic essence and taking that away from source, separating it from source in an inorganic fashion. The Titans, the moon Titan. The Titans are in m many mythos the fathers of the Anunnaki, the, the, uh, crea the creators of the Anunnaki. Not the creators of all. Did that 
part of the film in Prometheus where there's that rod-shaped UFO in the sky waiting for the engineer to drink the gray goo, and then he completely disintegrates and reforms as the alien. The DNA connects to something else, and it's just and it gets stuck in the water. Are those the Titans? Are those the engineers of the engineers? And do they come from Titan? And what was Saturn like 100,000 years ago, a million years ago, a billion years ago? What about the engineers of the rings of Saturn, the ring makers of Saturn? The images, even from Hubble Telescope Infrared, that show these enormous UFOs, humongous, that look as if they're manipulating the rings of Saturn. And then NASA confirms with satellites that in between the rings of Saturn, there's nothing there. And then you've heard the sounds from the rings of Saturn. If you've listened to my podcast or other podcasts out there that, sh that will give you the sounds of the rings of Saturn, what they emit, and the possible control matrix via frequency. Are there embodiments? Are there certain, is that like a soul matrix? Is that the actual soul cube? And maybe the moon is an outpost, kind of like the Cylons, Battlestar Galactica. I mean, these are questions you can ask or not ask. I mean, this is all fringe. This is definitely far out there. This is also connecting dots of science and data points and ancient relics and artifacts and scriptures, connecting all of that and then coming to a conclusion that you might call fringe. But really, if you read scriptures, even in the Holy Bible, and these people that live eight, 900 years and circumstances that unfold, this isn't any more far out than that. If anything, it's just connecting more dots and then coming up with a certain conclusion. There's too much evidence and carvings and petroglyphs and scriptures and ancient writings and stories and drawings and cave paintings and scribes and relics that unfold and that are already available for me to where there's no way I follow the official status quo on most of the scientific communities. They are more brainwashed and compartmentalized than somebody that isn't stuck to one set of parameters or ideals. That's the neat thing about Leak Project is it was created to get information from all aspects that are important to mold a conclusion of a definitive answer. And if not, well, we'll keep looking. The truth's out there. Now, with this said, I've seen the rod-shaped UFOs twice, and I've told you the times that I've seen them. Saw them within a period of a week in Utah, once in almost northern Utah, and then once in southern Utah. And my coworker confirmed it the second time in southern Utah. We both saw and explained the same thing. And I didn't get bad vibes from it, but I've talked to people before that said, well, those, those rod-shaped UFOs, that's, that's bad news. Is it, though? The Titans, the Anunnaki, are the Anunnaki the creation of the Titans? And who made the Titans? And who made them? And who made them? And who made them? Who made who? Who made you? Who made who? Let's go back to this image again here for a minute. Just look at that. That's That looks so much like an H.R. Giger drawing or art that I wonder if he saw this and started and, and got the idea from this or if he just, if it like came to him. Now, I have friends and family that have so many fascinating connections to the Anunnaki and 
data points that are like something pulled out of straight out of a David Icke book or a science fiction novel. That these people don't even necessarily like those people or know those people and they talk about the same things that, well, for example, David Icke writes about oftentimes with the reptilian type presence. Now, also, look at this thing. Look at this guy right here. Okay, this is a reptile, a reptilian dragon flying a, a, some type of ship found in Mexico. There's been thousands of these types of discoveries. I mean, what is, what is this about? Is this all just symbolic? And if so, symbolic for what? And then think about the blood rituals that took place in Mayan culture, Aztec culture, and still takes place today in more of an industrial 21st century aspect. And then you go back to the Emerald Tablets of Toth, the serpent archons that come out in blood when blood is drawn, when blood is, is shed out from the darkness, in the angles, in the finite lines, within the parameters of the Borg cube, the cult of Saturn, the soul harvester, Kronos, depicted as eating his own child for regeneration, Saturn, Satan, The question is, how do you break out of the parameters of a harvesting system that has become so advanced, so powerful, that it controls virtually every aspect of almost everybody's life? And then it learns how to break outside of the time-space continuum and create multiple lives simultaneously of the same individual over and over and over and over. An imprisonment within an imprisonment, a fractal broken off from the organic matrix of source, withering away into oblivion falling further and further and further outside of light, spectrum, essence, form. Never ending fractals within fractals. You know, I think of some real scary things sometimes when I look at the world around me and how much is going on on a daily basis that seems to be sucking the life force out of the planet and out of so many people that live on the planet and so many beings and think of all of the species that become extinct on a, on a weekly basis because of all of the pollution and you can call it a boot camp, and it is a boot camp, but how long until there's nothing left? And then whatever it is that seems to be orchestrating the strings at the top levels, because it isn't compartmentalized like virtually everything else is here, even people that have extremely prestigious positions of information access, you know, clandestine handlers, alphabet agencies, even the people at the top levels are still compartmentalized. The industries with high-end technologies compartmentalized, the, whether it's medical, whether it's nanotech, whether it's weaponized, whether it's inventions for good, everything is compartmentalized. Even factions that are supposed to help the people are compartmentalized to the point to where they compete amongst other factions that are supposed to help people to the point of diminishing returns oftentimes. Labels 
words, ignorance can all be contributing factors to the degradation, the downfall of essence of life. Think about that. Choose your words wisely. Express your words wisely. What is it? 60% body language. 30, uh, 32% tonality. And 8% what you actually say. It's like going to somebody and saying, I like you. I think you're great. <laughs> to me, I'm thinking, really? Sounds to me like you want to punch me in the face. What about somebody that goes, man, I hate you. I hate you so much. Come here and give me a big hug. And you're smiling at him. Well, think about that for a minute. I mean, obviously, some people are better at picking up body language than others. And if it's just text then you're not going to get the different emotions. No wonder people fight so much, especially on the internet. Think about that for a minute. If 60% of somebody's reaction to you is based on your body language and only 8% of the words coming out of your mouth are based on, are they going to perceive as the overall outcome of what they decide to do, essentially? Think about that. So it's how you say it. It's what you're doing as you're saying it. And even though people are becoming more plugged in to a singularity almost, like a one hive mind consciousness, we're also becoming more fragmented. We're becoming more separated at the same time because we're not able to express ourselves organically. It's in an inorganic medium that doesn't give near the expression that we do when we're actually looking at each other and talking to each other in physical form. And even that can be so limited. It's just more limiting. Once again, we're, we're going down this spiral that I just expressed just a minute ago. And if you really understand that concept, even at a subconscious level, then it will start to permeate through your consciousness and things will just start picking up and you'll start understanding things better. I wonder how much control they still have. And I, I look at these grays and these different ETs that are talked about, the reptilians, the grays, the pleadians. And I wonder how much of what Daryl Sims, the former CIA agent that has a lifelong history of being abducted multiple times, his family members have been abducted, if you've seen the series Taken by Steven Spielberg that came out years ago, I thought that that series was something based upon his life, like they wrote it from his testimony. And he talks about all the aliens that he's, he's seen, he feels are clones, because he says they don't have belly buttons. And he calls them different models. He's like, okay, the Nordics, those are the Corvettes. You've got the reptilians, you've got different levels of grays that have different intelligence levels. And much of what he says, I've been able to confirm with certain people, not everything. I don't think all aliens are clones. But then he would talk about the, the handler behind the reptilians and the greys, and, and, but he wouldn't say who they were or what they were. And he did say, though, that they were, you know, he thought that the, they were fallen angels. So the more, the more research I've done and put together, the Anunnaki... are most likely the ones creating these certain grays, not all of them, certain ones. Many of these abduction experiences and encounters could be because of these Anunnaki. I mean, think about it, genetic manipulation. Think about all the genetic manipulation that took place pre-flood that's talked about in the scriptures. If you're religious or if you're not religious, all this stuff that's talked about in Sumerian and Egyptian and petroglyphs that you see of all these different creatures with animal human parts and stuff, different animals. You've even got 40,000-year-old figurines of lion people. Maybe there were originally once lion people, and then maybe the Anunnaki messed them up. I don't know. 
we find it seems like the Smithsonian points to the fact that there's 12 different humanoid ape looking people, but they just look like apes. They don't look like humans. They don't they don't have the elongated skulls, humanoids that are, you know, all over the place now being found on that website where it shows all the other ape looking humanoids. The, you know, they're, they're, the hobbits aren't there. There seems to be a very limited spectrum of what the powers that be want us to believe. I don't think the Anunnaki made us better. I think that they really screwed up our organic evolution. And hopefully they're trying to, to help get it back. And hopefully there's factions out there that are doing their best to help us get to where we need to be. Yet you look at the world around you and it seems like whatever's controlling things are planet killers. They're slowly sucking the life source out of this planet. What do we do about it? How long do we let this happen? Or do we just say, okay, we give up? You know, do you, do you have family? Do you have kids? Are you married? Do you have people you care about? Do you care about yourself? Do you want your kids to be able to have kids and live in a healthy environment? Or do you just not care or do you just give up? And then the question is, well, no, Rex, I don't give up, but what, what do we do? Well, that's the million dollar question. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you this much. Looks like things are already being done. I mean, for example, I talked about the Geoengineering Act of 2017 that one of the lawmakers in Rhode Island is, is pushing a bill to where if there's any geoengineering going on, they need to, to get a license for it. And you can look at that and say, oh, they just want more money, which, yeah, it's going to bring more money for them. And at the same time, at least they're making an effort to make people aware that in that article, it talks about how they spray nuclear waste in the ozone to change the weather and the atmosphere, how there's frequency manipulation with particulates sprayed in the atmosphere. All the stuff conspiracy theorists have been talking about for 10, 15 years is now verified via Rhode Island lawmaker via a bill that's available public information that verifies conspiracy theorists are a lot more sane than those shills out there that can't pull their head out of their a-hole to look at the sky for 10 seconds and see that there's a difference of contrails versus chemtrails, stratospheric aerosol injections, LAIs. I think you should call them STDs, stratospheric transmitted diseases for some people. We live in amazing times. We have incredible opportunities. We have an opportunity right now to make a difference, and we are making a difference. We have to keep doing it. Otherwise, too many people give up. I mean, it's going to be tough enough if we're all working together, let alone if it's just a very small percentage. We're in dire straits right now, ladies and gentlemen. Our planet is in dire straits. Will we even have a chance to talk about this 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Or will, be, will the world be so messed up that whatever life is left on the planet has to be plugged into some cybernetics, cryogenics slash transhuman machine to where it just feeds that person barely enough essentials to survive long enough? And then there's some type of machine that extracts that person's you know, amino acids and energy source and, and nutrients to power a machine and then in return it gives it back a little bit similar to the matrix but in a more realistic aspect i mean look at the freaking vertical chicken farms that wired magazine was showing off a few years ago these chickens that were genetically modified to where they supposedly didn't have feelings and couldn't see and couldn't hear but they were still alive and plugged into these vertical machines that look like something out of the matrix i mean it's just disgusting at least in the film the matrix the people that are that are you know in this system of encapsulment to where their food for the machine at least they think they're in a regular life at least they're not living in pain and suffering as much as these animals are on a daily basis in these chicken coops that they can't even see daylight and they collapse within a foot or two of walking because they're so fat that their bones don't handle it because they're not designed to be that fat because of all the steroids and growth hormones in the feed? Or how would you like to be one of those cows that's like in line waiting to be slaughtered and it can hear all the cows in front of it getting slaughtered? Going, how would you like that? Or, I mean, geez, it seems to happen in human form too oftentimes you hear about. At least 
the machines were humane enough to let people think they were in a regular reality. As messed up as that regular reality was, it wasn't as bad as what I just described. Talk about hell on earth. People say hell doesn't exist. Well, put yourself in the position of one of these animals. Oh, man, well, God gave them to us to eat. Well, whether or not God gave them to us to eat, did he give them to us to, to treat them the way that some people do in those industries? I mean, that's what I'm saying. The whole system's messed up, ladies and gentlemen. The whole system is corrupt. Everything. All the way down to your toothpaste. If you're, if you're brushing your teeth with these name brand toothbrush, toothpaste, that's got fluoride in it. I mean, think about that for a minute. Every single system out there that makes millions, billions, trillions of dollars. Look at the underlying theme. It just it reminds me of that experience I had several years ago where everything, it was, like, it was like being inside of a horror film. Everything I turned on the TV, I could see the underlying theme of death, murder, robbery, cheating, stealing, destroying. So whether it was Saturday Night Live or a cartoon or a commercial that was on. You could just, you could see the subliminal program. It was just disgusting. I couldn't even watch TV. I had to turn it off. It was, it was frightening. And the house that I lived in at the time, pretty sure this house has some pretty dark mojo there. Very, very dark. I found out from the neighbors previously, several people that lived there before me, several couples that were married, every one of them got divorced. People that live next door to me, they, were, they have lived, they, I'm sure they still live there. They had been there for 40-something years when I was there. Real nice people. Bless their hearts. Good people. And you just wonder sometimes, you know, how much is feeding off of this system? And when does it get, what is it? And when does it have to stop when does it realize that if it keeps doing this that there's going to be nothing left or does it not care because it can just move on to the next planet the next planet the next planet what was mars like a thousand years ago a hundred thousand years ago a million years ago people could say oh it's always been like that man there's never been life on there there's well i disagree we live in amazing times folks let's let's Make the most of every day. Unplug people one day at a time, one mind at a time. If you can do it 10 minds at a time, great. If you can do it a million minds at a time, even better. Remember, we're in this together. Even when you see somebody that you don't like and you can't stand and, and you despise, and I have to remind myself of this, that is a fragment of consciousness. And if you get to the quantum level, many experts say at the quantum level, there is no separation. What's out there is in here. What's in here is out there. What's up is down. What's down is up. What's left is right. What's right is left. And your conscience knows what's really right. You don't need somebody else to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Do you? I hope not. Your conscience should be your judge, should be your guide. What gives you the right to judge somebody else? What if their conscience is different? Now, then that gets to the very edgy question. What about a sociopath that has no conscience? Well, what, what about a sociopath? I can't judge that sociopath. I can defend myself. You can defend yourself from a sociopath. Yet if that person doesn't have a conscious mind to make decisions, if that person doesn't know what they are doing is right or wrong, how, how do you judge them the same? I don't know. I mean, these are all very difficult questions. That's why I ask so many questions sometimes that start asking questions about the question I just asked and I lose track. You guys are like, come on, Rex, stay on track, stay on focus. I get it. And on that note, I want to close out with this. Look at this image. Enki, Enlil, Anu, the Ajiji, the bird people, and the tree of life in the center, what I feel is the DNA. And look at how they're all pointing up at Anu in the heavens, on the winged platform. 
They're all pointing at him like, yep, that's where we came from. That's our master. That's our creator. That's our engineer. My favorite movie growing up as a kid, you probably watched it. Jeez, I, I watched it hundreds of times, hundreds and hundreds of times. It's funny because nowadays I have a tough time watching a movie more than once. But growing up as a kid, I watched movies a lot. And one of my favorite, my very favorite movie growing up as a kid, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon is amazing. Well, Flash Gordon saves the universe. How can you not love that guy? I mean, he saves the universe. He destroys the evil Ming. If you look at Ming, by the way, look at Ming from Flash Gordon from the 80s film. And then look at the founder of Satan. Look at the founder of Satan, Anton LaVey. They look almost exactly the same. They could be clone copies, literally. And you've also got the bird people in Flash Gordon, the Ajiji, and the evil emperor, Ming, a.k.a. Anton LaVey. Even when he gets killed at the end, when Flash Gordon, he's, gonna, he's, willing, to sa- you know, he's willing to die to save the universe. They're like, they're, they, um, the mad scientist goes, Flash, come on, man, get off. You, get out of here. We got to go. You're going to die. You're not going to make it. And, and Flash Gordon goes, man, one, one person to save the world? He's like, that's awesome, man. I'm going to do it. And he's, he's, you know, and he's like, okay, I couldn't change your mind otherwise. So he, you know, the, the engineer jumps ship. You know, he ain't sticking around. He's out of there. He doesn't care. He's, he wants out. He's, he's worrying about himself. Well, Flash Gordon stays on the ship. And guess what? Right as Ming is about to marry his, the girl that loves Flash, and Flash loves the girl, right as the evil Emperor Ming's about to marry her, and she's like, no, you can't do it. Well, Flash Gordon breaks in. And the ship that he's flying, it's got this like gigantic rod on the front of it, and it just goes right through Ming. You know, and you can see you can see Ming come out, and he's got the ring, and he's like, oh, and then then he disappears, and the ring falls, and everyone's like, yeah, Flash One, save the world, save the universe, and everybody's all happy and excited, and and uh, at the end of the movie though. Something happens with the ring, and you can hear Ming, and like you can hear his laugh echoing. You don't see him, but this wind starts whirling up, and even after Ming is taken out, he comes back, is my point. It's the epic battle of good and evil. It's the perpetual war of light versus dark, the yin, the yang. As above, so below. Everything connected at the primordial source. Make sure to connect to our website, leakproject.com. We have exclusive content on leakproject.com, only available for premium members. Ten bucks a month or fifty bucks a year. Your contributions greatly help Leak Project grow. And also our podcasts, most of them, we've got eight hundred or so podcasts on youtube.com slash clandestine timelord. Make sure to support our sponsors, GetTheTea.com. I've been taking this stuff called colostrum. I love this stuff. My energy levels have been through the roof. My food is digesting better. I think this stuff is great. Also, check out the Quick Bivy. I'm going to leave a link in the video description box. These things are tiny. They're a few ounces. They fit in the palm of your hand. Put it in your car, in your glove box, in your bug out bag. One of these Quick Bivvies could literally help save your life if you ever get in a situation where you're going to be cold for a long period of time or for you know for a day or two days one of these quick bivvies could definitely help you out and check out x point if you're interested in getting into a survival type insurance bunker (laughs) these things are about 2,000 square feet they're concrete still enforced military grade dome shape bunkers that were built by the military in the 40s and now there's a section in southwest South Dakota where you could get into one of these bunkers. So I'm looking at mine as a vacation studio for the summertime. And plus, I love getting out of the big city sometimes. I certainly don't want to be out there in the winter. However, I will tell you this. If it gets to the point to where 
things get really bad and I see a lot of signs on the horizon of possible situations that I don't want to be in a big city if that gets to be that way. So with that said, I do have an opportunity to get out there now if things get really bad and so do you. So check it out, terravivos.com. Use the code LEAKPROJECT and you will get extra goodies with your purchase. So that is my shameless plug. Thank you for being here. Question everything. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about the, the dots that I connected here in this podcast in the comment section. Be the change you want to see.